I've learned I try to make it home as much as I can. I really, you know, I really miss the people in Texas while I'm in New York, but uh, I make it to Warren over in East Texas a little bit, but I now have a home out west of San Antonio over in the hill country where I make most of my, spend most of my time in the off season. But I do make it back to Warren and Austin quite a bit in the off season. What have you gotten into, ranching? Well, yeah, a little bit of ranching. Uh, my hobbies really keep me from working. I like to fish and hunt a lot, so uh, I do a little rodeoing, so that really keeps me from doing much of anything in the off season. If you're rodeoing, you got to compare notes with Garrison one of these times. Well, that's all <laughs> I hear when I go to rodeos about Walt Garrison. I, I hear he's a heck of a bulldogger and a calf roper. And myself, I steer rope because I don't like to get off that horse that much. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's just a lot of fun. It, uh, good people in the rodeo, and I really enjoy it. You know, I know that the cowboy uh, officials at front office, they, they allow Walt to pursue that off-season hobby, but they kind of look with arched eyebrows. Do you get any trouble from the Jets on it? Well, if they really knew what I was doing, I think I'd get a lot of arched <laughs> eyebrows. But the people up north, they don't know much about rodeos, so, you know, we really didn't understand what's going on but really it's just as safe as anything else I feel it just you just got to be careful it's just like anything you do you got to be careful and protect yourself John this is your ball club all right At Fort Hood, it's spelled differently, but to men from the 2nd Battalion, 7th Cavalry, repelling is a different and unconventional way to get from a helicopter to the ground. 
These assault troops, trained in repelling into tight places, are demonstrating their art, or maybe it's a science, for a crowd at Big Town Shopping Center in Mesquite. It's an impressive sight, especially when the last man out, Captain John Ellis, goes down virtually head first. The whole thing goes hand in hand with Army recruiting, of course, but it still draws crowds to see the men almost jumping out of combat helicopters and to see the display of U.S. and foreign weapons. The weapons include the M-16 rifle, as well as the famous Chinese AK-47 and a portable radar mounted on a jeep. The radar is said to be sensitive enough to pick up a man moving at unbelievable ranges. But of course, besides the repelling, the real crowd pleaser is the Bell Cobra helicopter. Recruiters hope, naturally, to interest youngsters in the Army. Whether they do or not, they're sure to draw a parking lot full of people tomorrow when they'll be in the shopping center all day. Phil Reynolds, Channel 8 News, on the move. Well, we, of course, are an organization composed of wartime veterans, and uh, certainly someday we hope to phase ourselves out of existence when we can get to the point where we won't have any more wars. But in the meantime, we would like to attract the Vietnam time veterans. Uh, Why are they not w willing to join? Well, no, no, I didn't say that they weren't willing to join. We haven't got as many as we'd like to have, though. We have started. We've, uh, we have between 450 and 500,000 last year, and we're hoping to uh, have substantially more than that this coming year. Well, it was just when he came out of the house, he splashed, splashed the kids with the water before he got in the car. That's what the neighbors told me. So he did know someone, he did know someone was there then? Yes. What do you want to happen now? What do you want done? Well, I just well, I want the best to have the law do what's supposed to do. And have this man punished for what he did do.
I mentioned before, plaids are for all occasions. Well, I think uh, overall is, is shoring up uh, our overall football team, certainly offense and defense, and showing improvements in in uh, oh the number of points scored against, the number of points scored for, and all that sort of stuff. But I think the big thing is is still the the, the um, improvement of attitude, the willingness and desire to win, uh, establishing um, a rapport with the players, uh, a relationship that. They're going out and do their level best to be a winner. And uh, along that line, make good citizens out of them at the same time. Uh, they realize that the uh, mental frame of mind of a football player is as big a part of his conditioning program is perhaps his wind, his legs, and so on. And uh, they came back with the idea that uh, they were excellent football players, that they wanted to win, and uh, they have certainly showed every sign of it on the practice field. Well, I mean, it's, it's different from last year. I mean, everybody wants to get the job done. Everybody want to work together as a team. Everyone is thinking about the same thing, which is to win, you know, and not to give up. And so uh, I think uh, UTA fans will see a whole new different attitude this year on the field because uh, everybody wanted to kick, scratch, bite, do anything they can to win. And uh, this is what it's going to take. What are some of the things that you plan to do which would be considered trying just a little bit harder? Well, for instance, like my roommate, President Clemmer, He's a little more reckless than I am and while he's out on the field. And like I play a little more conservative than he does. But this year I'm going to try and play conservative, but on the other hand I'm going to play reckless too.
we are proposing that through the fire departments of the county, this includes the city of Fort Worth, that an ambulance service be established to render emergency ambulance service on a seven minute basis anywhere it's needed within the county. And uh, this being a five year program, we feel that in that five years we will be able to eventually become self-sustaining where uh, there would be very little charge, if any, to the county government or to the taxpayers. We signed the contract. We said we'd report every raise. Like it a lump, and I'm not going to turn it in because I figured that if they continue to take 25% of our income, we won't have anything. Well, listen, Bertha called me today, and she said something about they were having some kind of refinancing problem, and they're going to go to the board meeting on Thursday night. Yeah. So maybe if we go, they'll help us. They can help them with refinancing. Maybe they can stop the housing authority from taking 25% of our income and reduce it to 20%. If they can do that, we need to go down to the board meeting. Yeah, and maybe some of our neighbors are having the same problem. We can get them to go, too. Right, let's go. Okay. They're not addressing that. You have to turn them around and make them address the issues that, that are important to you. See, there are courses you can take. You can go through legal aid. Yes. Two rifles from a former inmate at the county jail. O'Connell said Montgomery was indicted on both charges while Flory was indicted only in connection with the gun theft. And O'Connell implied there is a possibility of a removal suit against the two lawmen. Public office, uh, regardless of uh, what is involved in it, is an office of trust. And anytime this type of trust is violated, particularly in this day and time, why I think it's a matter of concern uh, not only for my office but or anyone, uh, you know, in the county, any taxpayer, any citizen. A couple of hours later, Sheriff Montgomery appeared in court with his attorneys. District Judge Tom Ryan set bond at $20,000. Montgomery appeared relaxed during his arraignment, but refused to talk with reporters after posting the bond. But in a written statement, Montgomery indicated his name would be cleared in court, adding that the indictments were the work of political enemies who want him defeated in his bid for re-election. Jack Hill, Channel 8 News, and the move from the Collin County Courthouse.